Thank you so much for joining us tonight to think about reconciliation. It's really inspiring to see everybody coming out. Uh, I want to start by acknowledging that I'm a settler on the land that we're situated on today. My mother is an immigrant from Cyprus, and my father's family came as an uninvited guest a long time ago. Settlers have a key role to play when we're thinking about reconciliation, and part of that is listening to Indigenous voices and people who are writing about this. Individuals like Adrienne Keene, who writes both on Twitter, on her blog, and also on academic journals, and scholars like James Youngblood Harrison. So many important lessons that I want to share with you today, and also think about what does that mean for Ontario? What does that mean for us? What can I do? So thinking about what cultural appropriation means, because there's certainly a lot of confusion about it. When you see um, a team with an Indigenous mascot, or what they claim to be an Indigenous mascot, when you see a dream catcher on sale at a big department store, or when you see individuals dressed up as another culture, you're seeing an instance of cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is a taking of cultural property or cultural markers by someone outside of the culture, someone who's not part of that culture. Indigenous peoples in Canada experience this every single day. Their artwork, knowledge, and language is taken by those who are not Indigenous, often for their own profit. I think this is an act of theft, and I think it's hindering the flourishing of Indigenous culture. And it's something that we have to address when we're thinking about reconciliation, when we're thinking about moving forward. First, let me tell you that I didn't always feel this way. I was really confused about what cultural appropriation was. I felt a lot of anxiety, because I didn't know what I could wear, what I couldn't wear, if I was being offensive or not. And I feel like a lot of people have the same types of emotions. It's not necessarily that they're wanting to appropriate or that they're wanting to be offensive, of course, but they just don't know what cultural appropriation is. So that's something we can talk more about today. Often I think the argument we hear is that I'm not trying to appropriate culture, I'm appreciating culture. Appreciating culture is so important. Respecting culture is so important. But cultural appropriation actually involves two main harms. The first is mis misrecognition, and the second is economic exploitation. Misrecognition occurs when Indigenous peoples are essentialized or stereotyped, treated as one group, as a group we can define in any certain way. We see this especially when we see individuals dress up and in what they label as an Indigenous cost costume. And that's something that occurs on Ontario campuses, so we saw this at Western University and at Queen's University, and also at big music festivals in Canada like Oceaga. Individuals dressing up as what they see to be the culture. When they do so, they see the culture as a costume. You might be dressed up as your favorite TV character, or you might be dressed up as what they would think is an Indigenous person. It treats the culture as a thing of the past, a fiction, it doesn't realize the reality of contemporary Indigenous peoples. It's not appreciating the culture at all. Dressing up as Pocahontas doesn't mean you know anything about Indigenous culture. The other harm that occurs with cultural appropriation is economic exploitation. Economic exploitation occurs when you take the work of someone else without adequate compensation. And so we can think here of a dream catcher on sale at a big department store, for instance, taking a cultural artifact, cultural property of Indigenous peoples, but taking them out of the creation, the production, and the profits. As such, they're stealing the property and reaping the profits off of that. As opposed to buying a culturally safe dream catcher from an Indigenous person, it's bought at a big department store. In order to address these harms, I think the main question is, how can government and policy serve to protect the cultural property of Indigenous peoples. And I have three main ways in which I believe it can do so. First, the mandate of the Ontario Ministry of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation should identify preventing cultural appropriation as a part of their mandate. I think this is so important because then we know there's ongoing research, there's ongoing consideration about this topic. Too much we see it just in the media discussed in a very superficial manner. We need to give it more serious consideration. Second, consultation should be undertaken with Indigenous peoples about cultural property. What is considered cultural property? How could it be properly engaged with? I think that will get rid of some of the anxiety I know I have about what is considered cultural property. How can I best approach it? And when desirable and appropriate, certain items could even be labeled as part of, um, as carrying cultural va value or interest, and that's part of the Ontario Heritage Act. The third action plan piece that I have is that specific programs, initiatives, and policies should be developed to prevent misrecognition, 
and exploitation of indigenous peoples, both through cultural appropriation and beyond that, more seriously considering how we can prevent this harm. Before I conclude, let's just think about what I'm not saying here, because again, there's a lot of confusion around this topic. I'm not saying that we can't share cultural materials. Of course, we're gonna do that. And of course, there's so much beauty in indigenous culture. I think this is important, but I think we need to consider about how we can respectfully do so. So for instance, I got these earrings at Atlosa Family Healing Services in London. I know who produced them. I know where it was housed. I talked to the people there. And I also know who the profits are going to. And you see this in every community and also online. You can engage with Indigenous peoples. They're producing such amazing things. And this is really the best way to engage in reconciliation, having those conversations, being aware of what we're buying, who we're profiting. So while I understand the anxiety and the confusion around this topic, I hope that I've pushed things a bit here today. And I hope that people in the audience, people like my former self, will more, more seriously consider cultural appropriation. Thank you. <laughs>